I think the hardest clients are people who have some level of success and they like took it to their head. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, the older guys that you see that are in like their thirties and their forties and they're talking about what they did in high school. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but what have you done as an adult? Yes. That's, those are the people that are hard because like, you're so stuck in your past of what worked back then. And Mm -hmm. it's like, that's great, but things have changed. Like we have to do some new things. Good idea. Now we buy merch. Oh, that's ghetto. Payment miss. Ooh, the ghetto. Say she quit. Ooh, the ghetto. Late on your rent. Rent is ghetto. New event. Ooh, the ghetto. Invoice in. Yeah, that ain't ghetto. Money spin. Oh, that's ghetto. Hold on. It's kind of ghetto being a CEO. Have you been completely isolating yourself in business? Like, you don't have people that you could do this business with. Well, you need coworkers, and that is why we created the Entrepreneur's Coworkers Community. This allows you to be able to develop relationships with other people in your community. So, in the Entrepreneurship Coworkers Community, we give you a quiz to find out who you are and what type of CEO you are. And in this quiz, you get to meet other CEOs that may be more creative or traditional or hybrid. We have these CEOs there for you. But even taking it up a notch we have local chapters in your city from Atlanta to Dallas to New York to Houston to Chicago chapters in your city where we're actually linking up every single month to work together linking up to go to brunch together having fun together doing community service outreach like this is a section of our life where we can really co-work and mingle with other people it's time for you to get some co-work assist and this community is completely free just because you're watching this podcast all you have to do is stop Pause the podcast, click the link below, take the assessment, get in the community, and I'll see you there. Bye, coworker. Back to the episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Ghetto CEO Podcast, where we talk about all things being a CEO, because honestly, y'all, being a CEO is giving super ghetto. And I got my co-host here today, Big Cody. Boop, 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 boop. Cody, stop I with the I changed the gunshot. But we don't need it. Everybody duck. We don't He has a it. gun. No, he don't. Anyways, so being a CEO is super ghetto, and he's, Cody is super ghetto as well, okay? But we bring y'all CEOs to the couch that's going to tell you the raw and unfiltered truth behind being a CEO. And today is no different, y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and do all the things to keep these episodes coming back. But today we got my friend, my girl, Maya. Welcome back, my girl. <laughs> what up, <laughs> I'm crying right now, okay? <laughs> Not again. No. no you don't I'm crying do anyway. from my yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay? Now I will not allow any about. liquids to come from my face, but no. thank you for having me back. <laughs> thank you. Y'all, so the joke is, Maya came to the episode, the, the couch, months ago. I think when we first started. For season one, man. I was just so mad I was not part of the season one launch. In the spring. Yes. yes no, it is fall at this point. Yes. Um. So... And Maya, her allergies just was taking beating over. Her ass. It Definitely was, beating my ass. <laughs> it jumped me. Yeah. It was like uh if if it if it was a fight, it was like four on one. Like they was <laughs> They was like <laughs> Maya, you yeah. gotta go. Cause one, two, three, and four. Yes. Both eyes, both nostrils were like, listen, we're just we don't want to be here. We're watching. You know what I appreciate it though? Like Maya was such a trooper. She yeah. she made it all <laughs> the way through. She did finish the episode. With, with the sniffles and all. She's yes. like, I'm gonna and if you need me to come back, I will. And it's like, baby, we're go. putting a reference clip here now. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah, but okay. Maya, welcome back to the couch. Um, we Thank are you. super excited to have you here. We talk about ghetto CEO. This is we actually bonded. This is how we became friends about talking about ghetto CEO shit. Yes, because yeah, you're right. Being being a CEO can definitely be ghetto. Yes. That is how we bonded because it's yeah, yeah, that's messed up a little yes. bit. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know yes. yes. Li- yeah. No facts. We were literally at for y'all. We was literally at a speaking engagement, and I had seen Maya online, so I was like, "Oh, I want to go." You know, I'm gonna go over there. Let's talk to her or whatever. So I, t- I started talking to Maya, and we like you going through that, bitch. Me too. Right. Like you, these people crazy. You know, like yeah. and we realized we was really living the same life. Yeah. No, we really were because even like revenue wise, we were like, "Wait, I just did my first." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or I'm trying to do my second yeah but it's a lot and like people think it looks like this but yep. here's what it really is like so I love that you're doing this show because yes. people need to see the behind the scenes they gotta know so we jump right in Maya okay so we have a segment y'all called let's vent okay and so this is for you to anything that you feel like you need to vent about because I feel like CEOs don't get an opportunity to vent okay so what is something that has happened in the last seven days that you need to just get off your chest? Oh, hmm. I would say the hiring process is like 
man. Mm -hmm. I really honestly don't like doing any work in my business except Mm -hmm. for coaching. So just anything that's that is like, and which is why I'm always hiring because Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I found myself doing something that wasn't coaching today. (laughs) So I need to hire somebody for that. And sometimes it's a blessing because I find great people. And then sometimes it's like you lied on your resume. Mm. (laughs) You lied to me. You lied. So who, no names, obviously. Do you do you know your worst hire? Like this, like I had no business. It, it may have been desperation. You tricked me. Like, tell me about your worst hiring experience. Ooh. What was my worst hiring experience? I can't even think top of mind because I just try to eliminate mediocre stuff from my mind ASAP. <laughs> and that so, did not it never happened. <laughs> right. It never happened. Right. Um, but it just be people who say like who wait around for you to tell them what to do mm. when it's like you've already had training or yeah. you should already know to do this if yeah. you have the experience that you say you have. Mm. Um, or people that say they did something and they either didn't do it or they didn't do it to the standard that you want. And mm. I am really big on standard operating procedures. So yeah. you're clear on my standard and the quality that I expect. Right. So I just don't like mediocre performance. Mm. Okay. Follow up question to that question. Mm-hmm. What was the most ghetto firing experience you had to do with an employee? Have you ever gotten pushed back? If somebody like, oh hell no, oh, I definitely have. Oh, you, like, you be you be fighting. We ain't talking about you. Um, oh my gosh, none of my business already. That is so funny. <laughs> have I got? I'm, I'm sure I have. I feel like I don't know why my memory is just like anything that happened beyond 14 <laughs> days. It's just really hard for me to no. remember right now. Um, I probably had. I feel like somebody's like cried before or like teared up a little bit. Um, and yeah, I had a, I had an experience where it was almost like a little bit personal. I didn't fire her because I didn't like her personally. Cause I try not to create personal relationships with mm-hmm. the people that work for me, but it was like, she tapped into my personal life in a way that I felt was inappropriate. So it was just really awkward. Mm. Yeah. If you're over here on YouTube watching the podcast, listen, I need you to do me a favor. If you love me, do me this favor. Pull out your phone right now and go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts or anywhere that you actually listen to podcasts at, right? I need you to subscribe and leave a review. Listen, the way podcasts work is the streets don't know we doing good if it's not on the audio version. The YouTube version don't really count, okay? So go over there, leave us a review, and let us know how much you love the podcast. Now back to the episode. And so one, I mean, I've had a a bad experience with Or two or four, seven. You know, some, but (laughs) (laughs) who's counting? You know what I mean? Like, why why are we counting? So it's funny because we actually did an interview with um, one of my ex-employees um, that wow. was also my best friend, right? And so it was a whole thing. Cody was being messy. Whoa, it was crazy. It's great. Um, great. It's going to be a great episode, you guys. That's y'all crazy. make sure y'all go watch that. But um, I remember, and it's so funny because I guess it was so bad, she tuned it out. But one of my ex-employees, actually, I was coming on for the exit interview to fire her, and she was like, well, before you go, I got something to say. And, like, brought out a piece of paper and read me for fifth. Bitch, you don't care about this. You don't care nothing about money. <laughs> like, wow. read me. And I was like. <laughs> like she said, bump a referral. I do not need it from you. Nothing. And I was like, oh, wow. That's, like, it was, I listened to it. And, because. Um, Khadija was like, "You don't have to listen to this," and I was like, "Nah, she clearly needs to be get it off." Oh, her right, chest. but ma'am, I'm not your therapist. Like, <laughs> why are you doing all this? So, anyways, hung up the call. I literally cried because I was just like, "Dang." Was there any truth to it, or was it her I don't being feel, her feelings? I think it was her perception. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't think it was a lot of truth to it because I actually, like, this particular employee, I took from a certain place. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not and that's why I'd be hurtful when it's like, I was actually looking out for you. Bro, you was charging me $5 a graphic, and I didn't, you know what I'm saying? You got a 60K salary with bonus and benefits. Right, and blah, 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 blah. right. Which was definitely one of our mistakes, I know, like, trying to, we, yes. we overpay people for yes. sure. Trying to be generous because we yeah. like to see people be paid well. Yeah. But baby, I negotiate now. Literally yes. in my head, I'm just like, why the hell did we stop paying five dollars. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not convincing anybody to charge their worth anymore. Exactly. That's not paying me to tell them to charge their yeah. worth. Yes. And it's like at this point now I need you to prove it in the metrics. Yes. Your metrics need to prove right. that you need more. That money. was the thing. It was like I was just paying it because I felt like people deserved it. And you, it's so weird that like we do that here. because yeah. we never let our clients come to us and say, I feel like I deserve it. We're like no. 
you need to position your value. You right. need to articulate it. So yes. we definitely need to do the same for our kids. Yes. yes. And I think that's one of the hardest people. things. You know what I'm saying? Because, and then also with our mission, we want to see black women win. Period. Period. So even if you're working with me as a black woman, I still want to see you win. <laughs> Yeah. But then y'all be stealing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't be doing your job. You don't be, you know what I'm saying? It be real ghetto. <laughs> it's almost like, almost, they want you to lose in order for them to win. Like, yeah, I'm clocking in. I ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I ain't meet a deadline. But, oh, what my check? <laughs> don't I ask mean, me about payroll. I was saying, no. <laughs> that traumatized. <laughs> oh, my well, God. Well, you going to hit me? Yes. <laughs> it's 48 hours away. We got time. Mm -mm. Speaking of payroll, um... We, we know that CEOs often get paid last, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the company has to eat first. Yeah. Um, has there been a time where, I mean, obviously you're going to pay them because that's what you're supposed to do. But yeah. you was like, if I didn't get Keisha that check, I feel justified. I'm going to pay you because I'm supposed to. But have you ever just been like, right, I'm going to pay her. this our last check, then she gone? Or is it like, I'm going to give it two weeks, so give it time. Where do you get to when like people just aren't doing their job? Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely been those times, and especially when it's stressful, when it's like, your expenses are matching your revenue and it's like, Thanks. I'm breaking even. And so now mm. you're really starting to look at things yeah. and it's like easier to let things slip when you're super profitable. Mm. Things are going well. It's, like, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. They deserve yeah. it. And it's like, Ooh, when them expenses, you know, start to increace, you looking at people like, so what do you do? <laughs> What's Why your title? are you here? <laughs> right. Why are you here? And then you like realize you have extra people on the team. What? Like you go here. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know it's you a little overlap. Here. Cause you do what she do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'd be looking at it and I just start to, eye like, okay, I have to assess like, what do you need them for? Have you communicated that? And are they producing the results that you want? Mm -hmm. And if people aren't, I will, maybe adjust the scope if I want them around, but I know I can't afford them or I will just have to, you know, do the work myself and yeah. have to let them go. And I'll be honest, like if it's a performance thing, I'll let them know it's mm -hmm. a performance thing. If it's like realistically, like we just don't have it in the budget, you know, to keep this position, I'll communicate that. Yeah. Cause I do think it's easy for people to like pretend it like for entrepreneurs to pretend mm -hmm. it's a performance thing and make mm -hmm. somebody feel bad. And it's like, Girl, just say your sales dropped. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't try to make somebody else too bad because you didn't do your job as right. CEO. Right. So. And you know, one thing that I even, I remember when I first started, like, I didn't like firing people. Yeah. Like, it was like a very icky situation. I remember one person we had to fire, I literally cried. I was like begging this girl to be like, please tell me what you know how to do. Like, if right, you just right. I'm can tell me, great. I can breathe real good. I'm like, girl, I will pay you to breathe. Just right, know? right, yeah. Yes. And it was hard. Like, it was a hard situation for me to, like, just let her go. But then I started to get the pattern, and I was like, okay, I can handle it. But I remember in that first season, especially in a season of excess, I would feel bad because you needed to be let go because of your performance. But I would let you go, and I'd be like, you know what? I'll give you a severance pay. Now, I ain't being as nice. You know what I'm Girl, saying? Like, not a severance. So, I was like, who I think we I were am. doing too much trying to act like yeah. these corporations. <laughs> that, no, we absolutely ooh, were. That's it, Maya. Why do we feel like we got to act like McDonald's? I don't know because I was look like, I remember when I hired my first full time employee, I'm like researching, like, how do I give her benefits? How do yeah. I give her health care? Girl, you get this salary. Yes. That, I, I'm not a corporation. Yes. I'm a startup. Yes. And I think we have to realize that, like, seven figures is still startup. Startup. Money. Yes. And I think that's the thing that, and I want people to hear this in the episode, right? Like, I want you to know that, yes, you may go from six to seven, but seven is still a startup. You don't have to start, at, just because you get taxed as an S-Corp, you don't have to start acting like you a corporation. Why are we trying to do all of this? This stuff is expensive. Honestly, I think it's because we just want to do the right thing. Yes, we yes, really do. Yes. But and it's like we need people who are in our position to be like, I know you want to do the right thing, but the right thing doesn't mean benefits. It yeah. doesn't mean severance package. Yes. Like we need like, yeah, I don't know, uh, some a map or a scale to be like, at what rate do you do Current. severance package? Yes. At what rate do you provide health care for people? Mm -hmm. At what rate do you do this and do you do that? Because it's like we went from solopreneurs make it six figures to like now we're paying people six figures yes. and at what rate is it is my business too small for you to ask me for six figures <laughs> because this, this is what i want to know because i'm fed up 
Why do like you know where we at? We post our numbers online. You know how much we make. Why do you feel like you need one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars? What the hell is I? Let, girl, I done got mad. Like what is about now? If you coming in and helping me make a meal, cool, right? But help me make the meal first, please. So, do that first. Let's so start you. Let's start you at about fifty. Yes. <laughs> let's work. Then make the meal. <laughs> then we can bonus some things in. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I want honestly, and I think you know, I want people to hear this and say, like, we want you to win. I want to be able to pay you that. <laughs> That's the goal. I do but help me help you, <laughs> please, Jesus. Oh Lord. So, question. Yes. All right, this is for both of y'all. Okay. If you had to uh, post an Indeed resume for your position right now, like if you were going to be a CEO and you were going to post it on Indeed for somebody to apply for the job, but you got to put the real deal, like not the glorified Instagram, what does this job description say on Indeed? If I'm getting ready to apply for your job right now. This shit get on. <laughs> That's the title. Um, mm-hmm. But... You know what I'm saying? We're going to change some lives. We're going to make some shit shape. But I think, like, a lot of the stuff that I do is everything. Like, I'm mm. the one right now that fills in the gaps. Right. Mm. Like, whenever there's a gap in the company, like, I'm the one that needs to go. I might be uploading a course one day. I might be going in and planning an event, looking for a venue. So, it's just like, you need to be flexible. Oh. I am the one who might be able to notice those gaps, but my operations manager does that too. But like, I am very serious about, I don't want to do work that is not my job. Right. And so I'm, I'm always willing to hire and have more expenses to get somebody else to do it. I'm team, get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Pay for so it. for me, it's like, if you were to take my role, you have to be very good at spotting the gaps and make sure somebody is assigned to filling them. And having things in place so they're held accountable. But I'm also not a micromanager. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not doing a sauna and putting tasks in there. Like, mm-hmm. you got to come in the company. I tell you the gap. And you go write down your own tasks so you can fill it out. Mm-hmm. So I think, but it's still, you know, the role still has a lot of responsibility in terms of knowing how to spot people's character and their work ethic to mm-hmm. make sure they're not going to, you know, let you down. That's you know, that's a guess. good question because one thing that I thought about maybe like two, maybe it was a week ago, two weeks ago, and everybody was doing their job in the company, like mm. how they were supposed to. Me? Not you. Oh. Not sales. Oh. Sales <laughs> was the cop. Sales is the hardest thing. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Maya. You that that preach, my- that's that on, like, if you had to take my job, it's like, you need to do sales. Cause I don't even do it. Cause again, I don't want to. And it's not, it's not a good enough excuse, right? Like, yeah. don't. Be like me if you are not doing well in your business, right? Because I, the only reason I can skimp on sales the way I am is because how big my launches are Mm. throughout the year or like at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. But it's like my main thing right now is I have to be sales until I can hire an adequate person to convert for me and do sales. You know, we have an adequate sales department, Mm -hmm. Cody. But it's not adequate. I was like, we have a sales department. It's just not adequate. How do we get here? I mean, this um, feels really. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that um, what I was saying, I forgot what I was going with it. We were going- I just got so lost in the lack of work that you do. Wow. <laughs> Maya, defend me. Whoa. Where's What's your they- conversion rate? Hello, mama. I'm trying to defend you, but just like how we need our employees mm-hmm. to say, like, okay, this is what I'm doing. So we yes. like, let me support you. Let me give you this raise. Uh-huh. I'm gonna, let me defend you based on the data. Ooh, okay, okay, data okay. driven decision. Okay, my conversion rate <laughs> probably hovers between thirty five and fifty percent. Okay, that's amazing. I'm him. She just be mad. Okay. Huh. So no, Cody converts when he gets on the phone. Boom! It's the fact that he has to get on the phone and then actually like get the calls. You know what I'm saying? Okay, That's so the, he needs more calls. Yeah. So I mean, what what's your position? Is he a setter? I am or is here, he just a closer. He needs to do all. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. He okay. Everything. So your sales, but then your marketing too. Then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. You, know, you said that's not like a pay raise, don't it? Um, <laughs> Okay, anyway. Oh, okay. You don't get on them calls if it's, right. if it's commission. Okay, the, listen, the, you can pay yourself. The uh, salary is unlimited. That, that's it. Okay, the opportunity the is The opportunity is unlimited. Limited, I love CEOs. We got to put that in our resume. <laughs> yeah, we got to put that in our resume. It's unlimited. Okay. I would. Would you, hire, would you hire somebody to replace you in your company as a CEO? Yes. I would. Right before I sell. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would definitely. 
And yes. I was just like, okay, I will, you know, tap in for six months. Let me show you I'll the ropes. I'll be the talent. I'll, I'll post. I'll, y'all tell me. Yeah, I'll still I'll, host Impact Weekend. Yeah. I'll even do the webinars. Yeah. I just don't want to make I don't want to run a company. No. So yeah. we have a segment called, um, these are my confessions. That's the best note all day. Y'all heard you. I don't, I don't really like that you don't sing with me because you post the harm time. I, I, okay, let's try it again. These no. Are, <laughs> Wow. I'm I don't done. like you here. I don't like this relationship. So I'm going to ask you three questions. One okay. from your past, one from your present, and one from your future. And if you don't want to answer the question, you have to sing the song. Okay. I'm All right. Singing. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question is from your past. Name one person you did wrong, and how would you handle it right now? Oh, wow. Who you don't have to I say do? their name, but the Who situation. What did I do wrong? Mmm. What's the song? <laughs> These are my confessions. <laughs> I'll have to sing it? Yeah, yeah. I won't say, I, I don't think I did this person wrong, but I think that they were hurt by me. Mm. But it's hard for me to, like, want to give an F because of how they, like, retaliated. They, mm. they did the whole damn most. Yeah. But what I will say, I, I mean, I can only take responsibility for my part, so regardless of what somebody else does, mm-hmm. I can still be responsible. So I think... This person, we were working on a project together and, you know, I was paying them five figures to do this project. The first time that they did it, they worked with my budget. They were flexible and I thought it was okay. And I was Mm -hmm. like, well, let's do this again. I'm making more money now. Let me pay you a little bit more. And then the second time we did it, the quality was good, but it it wasn't producing results. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, me and this person didn't establish results from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that can be challenging because when, when somebody's doing work like you hire a contractor and they're physically you know doing work Mm. they think oh i'm doing work Mm. and then as the entrepreneur you'll see that the money is going out and then you're like but what am i getting for the work Mm -hmm. and so i remember like being in you know i was having a conversation with them and i was like i don't want to pay you anymore and i didn't mean it in a rude way (laughs) and like i'm an entrepreneur i don't want to pay for anything right you know what i mean i don't want to pay for anything what i really meant was like i need to get this sponsored yeah but i think they took it personally and you know my personality type is when you hear me say stuff like that I'm usually talking in a joking manner but I think they felt like I don't know I think they felt slighted by it Mm -hmm. so you know they took that and then they went and told people like Maya is always telling people to charge their worth she's the one that told me to charge this price blah 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 blah. she doesn't really believe in women Mm -hmm. and it was just like girl I just wanted somebody else to pay for it yeah like I just didn't want to pay for you know one thing a situation come to my mind similar right and it was the contract i think it's the contractor relationship Mm -hmm. because you expect the contractor to come in and have the knowledge and understand you are supposed to be the expert why do you have to train the contractors right like is that supposed to be how it goes or you supposed to come in as yeah i think also the issue too was she was also a client so i was a client Mm. of hers and she was a client of mine so yeah she's looking at me like well you should have just taught me how to do this and I'm like, I mean, I taught you how to put the packages together. You told me your expertise. Mm-hmm. Here's how you should create your framework and all of that. But yeah. it was just some nonsense. So I take responsibility for I could have delivered my message better. Mm-hmm. But other than that, that's it. That's it. Period. All right. Second question. If hypothetically, if you were to commit a crime and not get caught, what would you do? Not pay taxes ever. Period. I like that. It would just save me so much time. Yeah. <laughs> so much stress. So much time. You know what I appreciate? She put the ever on it. Like, ever, I'm not paying my 2024. It's not, yeah, it's not 2024. For <laughs> life. I, I'm never getting caught. Oh, yeah. Taxes never is gone. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's over with. It just takes too much time and energy. It like, do. And it's emotional. I wouldn't even draining. have to manage my bookkeeping. It would just be like, let me Fix. just make as much money as possible. And then you not find people who ain't doing They're like, Keisha ain't. It's all right. We ain't paying taxes. It's fine. We, we don't even pay taxes. Tax. <laughs> oh, no, we cool. got a lot of money in the account. It's, it's cool. just <laughs> All right. I love it. Okay. Last question is your future question. If you could coach anybody in the world to master their messaging, who would you choose? And why? Ooh. And why? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think there's a specific person in mind. Mm -hmm. It would just be somebody who is really brilliant and is coachable. Mm. Like, it's annoying when you are, like, using your gifts on somebody who's not coachable. Mm -hmm. So this person got to be coachable. But it's like they have a great idea. 
Um, they feel a level of confidence. They could probably use a little bit more confidence, but they really just need somebody to uh, help them communicate their idea in a way that can make money in the marketplace. Mm, I like it. I like it. So no celebrity am I. No, like, I would love to help Michelle Obama develop her brand. I mean, I think she's straight. She's good. Um, I don't think there's any celebrity in mine. I'm honestly like bad at like knowing and naming People. celebrities anyway. So I'm like, I can't even tell. It has to be somebody who's struggling in something. So mm. I can't not. I can't really like place a celebrity in my head who's struggling with their messaging. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. How do so, you? Uh, sorry. How do you define coachability? When you say you want like coach, coachability is like taking a second to like receive what was just given to you, right? Mm -hmm. So. Like when I'm coaching somebody and they always have an immediate response mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't need you to continuously justify why you're losing. Right. Cause it's like, <laughs> you're trying to justify something that's clearly not working. Right. I don't care what you did in the past. I don't care what you had in the works. Mm. Do what I just told you to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So receiving the feedback and then I think the other side to it, just the application of it. Like, cause some people are very receptive to constructive criticism like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah i got you i got you and then like two weeks later we meet again it's like why you see i just told you yeah, exactly. not to do that so mm -hmm. i think that's the other side of coachability just coming from a sales background i would have people to be super receptive to like what you're saying yeah i'm like all right so karen go do it just like that mm -hmm. and then karen goes and does the exact same thing but you know like your numbers they they actually got worse yeah there's no production there was no enhancement to anything we're doing but you're saying oh well i'm just not getting trained no you're not applying what the hell right. i'm telling you to do yeah. and if you just do it karen Karen, God damn it, do it. Just we'll, do it. We'll all just make do more it. money. And it'd be yeah. frustrating because it's like, I just, I want you to win. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And I can almost even have a little bit more grace for those people because I know it's more so like a mindset thing of like, okay, I received what you told me, mm -hmm. but I still feel stuck here. So when I see that people aren't executing, like even with our program, one of the things we measure is like the completion rate. Like did people go through the program and did they launch and did they get their ROI? Like those are the three measurables that we have for fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And so we take a look at, okay, did we like – is there a way for us to deliver the message in a way that's more receivable for them? Do they need more templates? Do they need co-working? Like, what is it that they need to take action? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of it is just fear, but it's just when people just talk too much. Mm -hmm. And like, and I mean that respectfully, right? Yeah. Like when it's like, okay, here's what your message needs to be. Okay, but here's what I did in the past. Why are you telling me your old messaging? <laughs> I don't care. No. No. Stop it. Please stop. Take you this know, message and go change your bio right now. I think people now. also don't know how to be a student. Yeah. Because I, if someone is teaching me something, even if I already know it, you just sound like an asshole to be like, oh, I knew that already. <laughs> oh, I yeah. can't stand those people. Your bank account says you didn't know the information. <laughs> you so can stop know something it. and not apply it. <laughs> so I don't care what you know. What did you do? Mm. Mm. Proof That's it. Enough? Yes. Yes. I don't care nothing about what you know. Yeah. And people, and I, so be a student. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. absorb, even if you already know, just absorb it yeah. and take it because no one wants to coach an asshole. Right. Like a no It's just the, that's, yeah, like the, the people that have ego. I think the hardest clients are people who have some level of success and they like took it to their head, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the the older guys that you see that are in, like, their 30s and their 40s and they're talking about what they did in high school? Mm -hmm. oh. And it's like, but what have you done as an adult? Yes. that's Those are the people that are hard because, like, you're so stuck in your past of what worked back then. And mm -hmm. it's like, that's great, but things have changed. Like, we have to do some new things. Yes. I love it. I love it. So what do you feel like right now in this season of Maya? What do you feel like you're looking for? You feel like you want to get better at? Huh, I want to get better at just having like more structure in my morning routine. Mm. You know, I really love to live a comfortable life, but I think sometimes I can make my life almost a little bit too comfortable. Like <laughs> I literally don't do that much yeah. and I don't want to be like that. And I don't know, maybe, maybe on the outside people might like, if they would shadow me for the day, they'd be like, oh, you actually do do a lot. But mm. for me, I think for my understanding of what my actual capacity is. I mm. feel like I could be doing more, but I don't want to do more for the sake of doing more. I want to do like what's meaningful, what's profitable, what makes sense for me right now right. in this season. So 
I think I would get there if I was like waking up earlier, journaling, like just exploring what's next for me. And I mm-hmm. think the high rise is going to help me get into that mode. Yeah. My house has made me comfortable. Yes. It's like even the morning routine of like you going downstairs, like playing the music, yeah. seeing your flowers, your assistant comes to make your food. Like Maya is spoiled. Wait, wait, wait. Maya let's go back. <laughs> See, I thought we were like, Foreshadowing and telling the future. This is happening right now. Yes, this is Maya's life every morning. Maya, what the <laughs> hell? Okay, okay. So I know you got snacks. Now I'm super eager. I'm done. Let me know when you moved in. I don't need the assistance to make snacks. I can make my own snacks. Okay. I just got to be there when I get there. Okay, gotcha. Because I, I like snacks. So okay. we're looking at how we can change our mornings for the better. Is that like yeah. the specific part of the day you're thinking about? Or is it like a... Yeah. Could I spend my evenings better? Or they're just like, hey, my morning, I got too much free really, time. Re- yeah, really the mornings. Like I, before, so right now I own a home, a single family home, and I love it. And it's so cute and, and all of that. But I am just so comfortable there. Mm-hmm. But then when I lived in an apartment before, it was like this cute two bedroom apartment. I could go on, you know, the rooftop and work out or mm-hmm. go sit by the pool and like being in that environment shifts me differently. I would like mm-hmm. wake up, I'd go to the gym, I'd make my smoothie, I'd go for walks and all of that. But now at my house, it's like, I I mean, I still like go to the gym and all that stuff, but it's like, it's boring. Like I go outside and it's like my mailbox and neighbors. All right. <laughs> so it's like, I just want that. I don't know. In my mind, I'm like, the city living is going to make me like, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to get my smoothie, I'm going to say hey to concierge and do yeah. all the fun things. So I think it's, I think being around other people versus just being by myself inside of my house is going to just make me excited about getting up. Do you feel like you conform to their lifestyle because your sister is more of a mom? And so like, you're like, well, she got a house. We should have houses. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. You was like, girl, I'm a city girl. I need to be outside. Right. No, honestly, the reason I got my house is because again, I live my life by convenience Mm. and you know how apartments are raising their rates every year. And it's like, you raised your rates and you didn't raise your value. So (laughs) what am I doing here? So it's like, I would move from one apartment to another. It's like, I'm not moving every year. This Mm. is stupid. So I'm like, I'm buying a house. Yeah. And it was just the most convenient thing at the time. So with the house situation now, you're going to keep the house. You're just going to move back into a high rise in the city. Yep. And is your like PTO going to be like, okay, now I'm going to my house for a vacation or like. I wanted that, but yo, these high rise prices are crazy. Yeah. So it's like for me to pay, I, I really would want to like just keep my house to like go whenever I want, but like to pay the rent and the mortgage is just right. Like it's just astronomical. Crazy. Right. That's it's a whole salary. It's so like, what why? you gonna do? You gonna sell it or you gonna Airbnb it? I'm not gonna sell it. I don't know if I'm gonna Airbnb it. I you wish I just some. knew somebody that needed somewhere to live <laughs> and could Rent pay me. If you are looking for somewhere <laughs> to live <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. and you have about twenty three hundred on you, it's a four bedroom. Come on. I literally was like, Maya, let's just trade. Cause I want to go to the suburbia right. lifestyle. Like this is, this Come is my on. life. But, um, no, I think that this is great. I think it's going to get you this new refound, like refresh. Cause I'm a person that needs to change their environment. Like yeah. I need to change my room around. Like I move every year. Like yeah. my friends talk about me. Like mm-hmm. I like need to change. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. It's like in my house, it was the, it was like a one note environment, even mm-hmm. though like my house is so cute and I love it. But it's like in the high rise, I can go to the co-working area. Mm-hmm. I can go to the pool. I can go to the second co-working area. Mm-hmm. It's like I need to be able to change my environment without having to get in my car. Mm-hmm. I and I it. hate commuting. So switching gears a little bit. So you spent a lot of time with your nieces and nephew. Um, I am an auntie as well through all Cody's kids. He got, got hella kids. <laughs> he got That's three. crazy. It's three. Okay. But um, it might as well be 15. Yeah, right. it feels like it. Yeah. It definitely feels like it. But how do you prioritize your relationship with your nieces and nephews? And how does that impact your business? Oh, my gosh. I'm, like, so obsessed with them. I think so. I mean, they might have some things going on with school or their birthdays or whatever. So Maddie will try to keep me in the loop and send me calendar invites. And I also think, you know, my sister and brother-in-law do such a good job having their own routine that Mm. it's easy for me to, like, slide in. Like, you know, every Friday, my nieces and nephew go to my parents' house, and they live six minutes away from Maddie. Mm. So they call it Grandpa Friday, and they just go over there. So I know if I want to see them, I just go to my parents' house. (laughs) Then every Saturday, they do movie night as a family. So if Mm. I want to do a movie night with them, I could just go to my sister's house. Mm. So it makes it really easy for me to be able to see them. And then if they have things going on at the school... 
uh, Maddie will let me know. And if, you know, if I have freedom in the day, like I will close my calendar for the day Mm -hmm. to make sure I show up for them, you know, if I'm able to. So it's just great. They're just so stinking cute. And my sister does a good job with the routines. I love that. Cody, you need a better routine. I Excuse just, me, what? I just be having a pop Maya, up. Maya, did you just keep feeling attacked? Like, I don't know why she's just throwing <laughs> elbows at me. I'm like, I need, I need schedules. I don't. I, I need to see, like, if we can have a counter, like, Cody versus Monray, like, who attacked who more. <laughs> We need to tally it up. We need to. It's need like to fourteen to two right now. Wow. Also, I the like to drama. specify you are part of the reason I don't have a real schedule mm. because there are times it's like okay Tuesday you're doing this and I'm like oh I got to work today you say no you're gonna be at the podcast all day Tuesday yeah I just found this out Friday so That's it was hilarious. like Tuesday or it's like hey Friday night we're doing a webinar are you hosting yep I, I, oh okay so like I don't have a life that I could just yeah. I just move kind of like I'm I'm scared of her I don't yeah. know people at home I mean I'm since scared. you're part of the marketing. Help her create that routine and schedule with the marketing. Oh, no, her you know. schedule is phenomenal. Like, mm-hmm. hers is great. Like, I, I'm on her calendar. I yeah. know everything. I know where she at seven days a week. Uh-huh. I know when her calendar on red is her focus time. She really trying to sneak in a nap, but she ain't taking a nap. She's still going to be working. She <laughs> can't help hilarious. herself. I know, every, I know where she's at every moment of the day. Yeah. The thing is, she just always has me on standby. So she don't think to tell me ahead of time. She know I'm going to come. So it's just like, oh, yeah. Uh, Eric, text code and tell him he got to be here at 2 o'clock. And it's like, nigga, what? That's hilarious. I'm in traffic right now going the opposite direction. You You love that? Honestly, as a CEO, I love that for her. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. As an employee, you should probably have better boundaries. But as a CEO, (laughs) I love it. I love I love the people that, you know, when you interview people and they're like, what's your biggest weakness? It's like that I work too hard and okay. I don't have any boundaries. We're going to find out. <laughs> we about to find out. Test, testing. <laughs> have you found that like your best people came from corporate and worked in toxic environments? Hmm. No, I feel like my best people have not had a corporate job. Oh, okay. like Mia, she worked like me, but she is also a tourist. So I, I have this theory. I'm gonna hire one more tourist and see if it works. That's hilarious. Cause I'm a tourist. Yeah. So she has the same behavioral traits as me. Both of you guys are weird. Mm-hmm. And she <laughs> works so much. Like yeah. she works like me, how I was when I was 23. Mm, so yo, that's real. Cause I did work a lot when I was in my twenties. Like I, you know, I talk about how I don't want to do work now. Yeah. Cause I've been working for yes. over a decade. Like Facts. I don't want I'm to, tired. I'm tired. Auntie, and I want if we're spoiled because of that. Cause like our yeah. parents probably look at us like, I've worked for 40 years. Like, what do you talk about? You worked for five a decade. years till I retire. Right. Yeah, I'm, right. Awesome. I'm not doing 40 years. I don't have an Emmy. No, I can't. No. Why would I do this? <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I absolutely refuse. That is crazy to me. Yeah. So, no, I think that I have maybe another 10 left. Like, yeah. maybe. She's lying. Oh, I was supposed to be an internal thought. That's She's crazy. never going to stop working, guys. I just don't No, I, I think I'll always do stuff, but, like, working at this capacity oh, okay. where yeah. I have to no, work. No, 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 not at like this Like, now you still feel like you got to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to show up. Okay, I have another question. This okay. is clearly Maya's Get a, C- Get a CEO <laughs> podcast. Okay, I have questions. Do you feel like, you remember when Kim Kardashian got all that flack because she's like, nobody wants to work anymore. Mm. And how you said, like, Mia works, like, how you worked in your 20s. Like, Mm -hmm. I would work, like, 16-hour days, and it was fun to me. And Mm -hmm. I loved the ambition of, like, learning things, getting better at things. But I do think that getting money has been has become like easier. Like, you know, there's 20 something year olds making so much money on TikTok and all of that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's hard to find those like young, hungry people? You know, I do. My personal opinion is I do think it's a little hard. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that everybody feels like they could be a CEO. And I want y'all to know that everybody doesn't have to be a CEO to become wealthy. You yeah. can have a job and become wealthy. You could work here and make as much money as you want to. Just make me some money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Make us money so I can pay you. Like, you right. literally can write your own check. Make the company money. Yeah. And I'll take all, I'll take the taxes. I'll take all of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll yeah. take the flag. I'll take, I'll be the CEO. I'll run this shit. You know what I'm saying? But right. You don't even have to be the face of anything. No. Like, you don't have to deal with any public criticism. None of that. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. No, I love this. This was good, y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Welcome to Maya Cody's <laughs> and Girl CEO podcast. Okay. This was a good episode, y'all. I hope y'all really tapped in and got to learn a lot about the CEO journey and how you can really be able to overcome all of these struggles. Okay. Anything you want to leave for the people, Maya? 
I don't even know. <laughs> Have a good do I was good. On the spot. Do good do good work. Do good work. Yeah. Don't don't let entrepreneurship being ghetto deter you from yeah. Wanting to be an entrepreneur. And if you feel like it's not for you, don't force it either. Like mm-hmm. she said, it doesn't yeah. have to be for everybody. And you don't have to do it to build wealth. I believe in entrepreneurship. Like mm. really owning your role within a company. Yes. So just figure out what you're good at and figure out the best environment for you to be, you know, the best worker. Whether that's you being a CEO or you being a manager or whatever at a company that where you align with their values. I love it. I love it. Oh, what I got from me? I need to set boundaries for you. Oh, that wasn't a question. No, nobody. Oh, okay. He's like, well, my you biggest takeaway. Wait, Maya right. said. No, don't listen. No. Don't listen. <laughs> no, so more foolish. no more boundaries. No more boundaries. Now, Maya, before you go, you got to give us an outro. You got to give us a high 16 to leave the couch. Okay. So, Cody going to give you a beat. <laughs> Oh no! Wait, <laughs> no. We're I here. Thought, we're here. We're here. I thought a script was involved. No. Nope. You got no bars. You got the bars. Oh God. Uh, mm. I'm stressed. Mm. <laughs> said, My wig is slipping. <laughs> I didn't sign right. up for this. Right. right. It's crazy. I have to do this. I'm like literally sweating. I've been creating content all day. Now she's put me on More the spot. More content. All right. You got a bar. All right. Or okay. Okay, you got it. I don't know. We gonna okay. see. Let's see. Creating content all day. She put me on the spot. Mm. I'm getting really nervous. I'm getting really hot. Ooh. Under this blazer, the sweat under pits. Yeah. But it's okay, because I'm going to get some mitts. Yeah. 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 Boom, 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 boom. I told you I was going to break out that chop. I hate I it. I hate it. Oh, that was so gosh. good, Maya. Thank we, you. We're, we're signing you. Thanks. Okay, so we're going on tour. Yay. All right, y'all. Cody, I got a question for you. What up, though? What rhymes with CEO? G A E T T O. See y'all later. Bye, y'all. What a ghetto.